is now rebooting, I think. Yeah, there we go. Is this better? Much better. Okay, let me start again. I opened the um, combined public meetings of the examination committees for embedded systems and for business information systems. My name is Johan Lucky. I'm the Dean of the Department of Computer Science and Mathematics. It's a pleasure to welcome you and the candidates to this graduation event. We are as departments proud that 14 of our students, so you see them here in the front, will today receive their diploma. Some students followed joint programs. The Embedded Systems Master's program is a joint program with the Department of Electrical Engineering, and the Business Information Systems Master program is a joint program with the Department of Industrial Engineering and Information Sciences. We offered these students a rich variety of advanced courses given by excellent teachers. They also did a challenging graduation project. We think they are well prepared for their careers. Some continue into science, some go to industry, some start their own business, perhaps. And I sincerely hope that you enjoyed being here and the program that you took. The examination committee for business information systems has assessed the work of the following candidates. Mitchell Brunings, Teun Graafmans, Stevens <coughs> Jeetete, and Lieuwe Stoker. The Examination Committee for Embedded Systems has assessed the work of the following candidates. Ishan Bat, Justin Brouwer, Wenhuang Feng, Peter Hoeven, Sha Krishna Kaluri, Marijn Rol, Mark Solsona Ginesta, Snorri Stevenson, Diking Su, and Yachi Zo. Ladies and gentlemen, candidates, masters of science, I'm pleased to say that you have all passed your examinations and will therefore receive your diploma shortly. And this entitles you to the title Master of Science or the Dutch Ingenieur. Next, the graduation advisors of the candidate will over, hand over the diplomas with a short speech. I will not further introduce them formally. Uh, we will follow the slides uh, and that will call the next um, advisor to the scene and also the next students. With that, I would like to call the first advisor and the first student. Let's see, I was instructed. That's what we had. Michel, good morning. You can come over here. Michel, first of all, Congratulations on the passing of your uh, master's degree. Thank you. Um, Mitchell, we first met when I just had started as an assistant professor here in computer science. That was way back in 2013. And uh, you were a student in one of the classes I gave on process modeling. And over the years, you often joined my courses, both as a student and as a student assistant. Um, and I enjoyed your company in uh, either role. And when you later on joined the BizMaster program, uh, where I was a mentor, you also approached me from time to time when you, let's call it, needed a bit of motivation to go further in your studies. I'm very happy that you succeeded there and persevered. And when it was time for your master project, you chose a research assignment in process mining, which is a discipline of analyzing processes from event data. And I gave you a very difficult topic because I knew you were a smart person. Um, so over time, with your unique combination of wit and creativity, you came up with an idea of how to discover process models from event logs that are much better readable than what existing algorithms can do. The picture over there, well, for the unintroduced audience, doesn't tell much, but they can tell you it gives much clearer insight into the process that was behind it. Um, and when it came down to writing uh, your results, you had a realization of kind of Socratic dimensions you, that you had hardly scratched the surface of what you knew about the topic and that you wanted to go further. So uh, you made the right choice, and I'm happy that you are now joining us as a PhD student to continue on this research topic and dig deeper, and I'm very much looking forward to working with you. Again, con again congratulations on your master's degree, and I wish you all the best. Okay. 
So, Darren, first of all, I would like to congratulate you, Thank you. for your great achievement. And I must say, Rahman, you are. So, first, uh, let me admit that in fact I was very lucky this season as a supervisor. Uh, this season meaning this last academic year. I had two excellent students, one of whom is you, uh, who were yeah excellent students, did an excellent job, and both graduated with cum laude. Yeah, what uh, else can a supervisor ask for? Two excellent students. So, Tan, I know you as a kind of calm and a self-confident person, and. Uh, of course, very hard working, but uh, it's just as if it is very difficult to kind of terrify you or worry you, even in, uh, at very difficult times. When, for instance, the company that, that you were planning to do the case that is suddenly, towards the end of your uh, master's thesis, suddenly called and then just canceled everything, and you just came and this, yeah, told me that one and said like, yeah, no worries, I'll handle it anyway. And it was just like I said, hey, it's my line as a supervisor to calm you down. Uh, it's not you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is indeed the case. And what a nice trait, I must say. Uh, something that we should all also, in fact, learn something about it. And I, th I mean, the work that you have been given was a very challenging one. Uh, seeming the very simple, in fact, but uh, under, under the hood, under that layer, very difficult one, in fact. But you did, again, as I said, you did an excellent job. And in fact, not just graduated as a, with, with a cum laude, but also generated a paper, which is still waiting for my, uh, sorry, uh, final edits to make it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, once again, congratulations. I think you would be a very successful person and uh, as a, um, we will, I think, hear your achievements uh, as a TU Eindhoven alumni. Congratulations once more. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Stevens. Stevens, as I've just told everyone that I was very lucky and then, in fact, again, uh, a second student this year who, took, uh, who graduated with cum laude, and I'm also very happy about it. Congratulations, first of all. Um, yeah, what can I say about Jet, uh, uh, Stevens? So, Stevens, you're a very hardworking guy. Very calm, very self-confident, very... Um, yeah, pay a lot of attention to the details and uh, work very meticulously. Uh, uh, I mean, you, you just give something to J Stevens, uh, he would do it. He would, and that is, of course, I mean, as supervisors, we love that kind of uh, students. In fact, any kind of that people for that matter. Um, but I would remember you with your kind of aha moments where you when we are discussing something, when I try to dis describe something to you, something that's a little bit too difficult, you would always have, the, uh, have that very specific, I would say, these oh moments, which you would uh, then understand as a supervisor, okay, he got it, then we can proceed with that thing. So um, your work is also, your work was very, uh, not very easy at all, a different domain. But I think you, again, made a very nice work like that. And again, in fact, you were able to not just graduate with cum laude, able to generate two papers out of it. One is under review right now, and the other one is still, yeah, uh, needs some final touch and waiting for me. Uh, no worries, guys, will handle it. <laughs> and uh, again, as far as we know, you'll be uh, going back to your country, Indonesia. And I'm pretty sure that you'll be very successful there as well. Uh, congratulations again.
Uwe, I'm not your supervisor. I'm here on behalf of your supervisor, Joachim von Sroh, who couldn't be here today because he has to teach in class right now. Nevertheless, I congratulate you on your master's degree. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. And Joachim prepared a short speech that I'll uh, read in, on, on his behalf. So, uh, Lieuwe, your thesis was on the topic of machine learning. In particularly, you studied how different machine learning algorithms are affected by different problems in the data it is trained on. So, for instance, there can be a lot of noise in the data, which affects different algorithms differently. You did a very extensive empirical analysis of how different algorithms are affected, and you found several very surprising effects. In addition, you quantified these effects so that practitioners can take them into account when using machine learning algorithms. So that's also a very practical impact of your work. And in the future, this may also lead to more robust machine learning techniques that automatically correct for issues with the data. Your work is especially remarkable for its breadth, your report is more than 100 pages long and includes several hundred graphs and plots analyzing all sorts of effects. So maybe that's a record. In any case, Joaquin and I, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And you certainly have built a broader insight into machine learning behavior than most students have. And we hope that will serve you well. Congratulations. So, we have met um, a while back, Ishan, yeah, it was December 2016. Um, you came recommended by a colleague of mine who said, um, Ishan is interested in the possibility of doing something with machine learning. He's a smart guy and a quick learner. Okay. So, well, that was a, a little bit vague. But uh, I like working with smart guys and quick learners. So, we met and soon you started helping me with my research. At the beginning, you had to catch up with machine learning, uh, and I was pleasantly surprised how quickly you did that after following just a couple of courses and re reading several papers, all very independently. You became interested in generative adversarial networks, a really hot topic in machine learning today. And uh, just like Richard Feynman would say, uh, nearly everything is really interesting if you go into it deeply enough. You wanted to dive deep and to really understand the inner workings of GANs and why they were designed the way they were. Uh, and hopefully shed some light into those black boxes, as they are right now, um, which is uh, also a very significant and hot topic in machine learning today. I think this drive to uh, dive deep, to uh, understand how the world works, will help you uh, achieve very interesting things in the future. It was a true pleasure working with you, yeah, and congratulations. Thank you. Beste ingenieur Brouwer, ja, beste Justin, van harte gefeliciteerd met het behalen van deze titel Master of Science. Het heeft even mogen duren voordat het uh, zover was. Um, in mijn e-mailarchief zag ik dat we in maart 2017 al uh, begonnen zijn met nadenken over dit hele project. Uh, via Leg kwam je bij mij terecht. En ja, het idee was om inderdaad aan onze CGRA te gaan werken en daar een uh, automatische architectuurinstantiatie voor te maken. Dat zegt de meeste mensen helemaal niks. Maar het idee is dat wij een architectuur hebben, ook op het plaatje afgebeeld, met allemaal rekeneenheden die aan elkaar gekoppeld kunnen worden en daarmee heel efficiënt een programma uit kunnen voeren. Alleen wat we merken is dat het programmeren daarvan bijzonder lastig is en heel veel arbeid vereist. En eh, over het algemeen opgesplitst wordt in twee delen. En wat wij daar zien is inderdaad dat het architectuur bepalen, hoe hangt alles aan elkaar geknoopt, eh, ja ons toch een remming gaf in hoe wij daarmee verder konden. Nou, daar heb jij op gericht. Je hebt geprobeerd om inderdaad gegeven een programmaarchitectuur een, uh, ja, een mapping op deze CGRA te maken. 
Maar goed, dat bleek al snel dat dat een uh, bijzonder ingewikkeld probleem was. En dat is ook een van de dingen waar je veel tegen aangelopen bent. Dat hoe dieper je hierin dook, hoe groter het probleem alleen werd. Um, wat ik daar heel bijzonder uh, van jou vond, is inderdaad hoe je van je eigen perfectie een stapje terug hebt kunnen nemen. En uh, op zoek bent gegaan inderdaad naar een haalbare oplossing in plaats van naar de perfecte oplossing. Want die gingen we echt nooit vinden. En uh, dat was heel mooi om dat te zien. Uh, je hebt ons daarbij ook uh, bijzonder geholpen uh, door je methode voor te stellen waarin je uh, de operaties binnen het programma goed kunt clusteren. Waardoor het probleem uh, ja, maat eigenlijk gigantisch uh, verkleind kon worden. Waardoor we wel in staat geweest zijn om efficiënte oplossingen te vinden. En in een enkel geval was je zelfs in staat om onze expert te verslaan met een iets compactere oplossing dan waar we op het moment mee bezig waren. Dus bravo daarvoor. Ook namens uh, Leg Josjak en uh, Henk Corporaal, die je uh, mede begeleid hebben, uh, heel erg bedankt voor de bijdrage aan ons onderzoek. En nogmaals gefeliciteerd met het behalen van dit diploma. Dankjewel. Nou. Well, congratulations, uh, Frank. Okay, Feng, uh, you have carried out your graduation project at TU Eindhoven under supervision of uh, Mustafa Hagi and me. And your project dealt with embedded implementation of uh, feedback, uh, feed forward based tracking control for motion systems. And the motion systems are commonly found in uh, many high tech application domains. Examples uh, include uh, healthcare machines, lithography machines, printers, and many more. And in the motion systems, typically uh, position and or velocity of a machine is controlled by one or more servo motors. And a control algorithm is designed to compute the output of the servo motors. And overall, a motion system is required to operate fast and accurate. Today, most of the industrial motion controllers are implemented on embedded platforms with uh, limited capacity. And therefore, it is important to develop efficient uh, implementations for motion control. One of the challenge uh, in these implementations is to deal with the computational delay, and it is a common practice to reduce the delay in the implementation at a higher implementation cost. In your work, you have shown that delay does not always cause performance degradation, and you have identified operating regions where uh, delay improves motion controller's performance. And you have uh, proposed a design flow where the delay is treated as a design parameter to improve performance of the motion systems. And for this purpose, you have considered a platform with predictable uh, execution behavior, and you have, you have validated your approach um, with real experiments. The project required in-depth knowledge of both control theory and embedded software. You had a limited familiarity with these uh, subjects at the beginning of the project. You have worked very hard to develop understanding on control theory and embedded programming, and you have successfully built up an expertise in these areas, which was crucial for the success of the project. In the entire project, you have an extremely dedicated, hardworking student, and you have, to, you have been proactively planning uh, to meet the deadlines. Overall, it was a successful project, and it was a pleasure working with you, which produced uh, results with scientific values and results are very relevant for the ongoing European project IMAC on industrial motion control and your work is followed up and a conference publication uh, paper is submitted for publication. I'd like to congratulate you again and uh, wish you all the best for your future. Beste Peter, in dit mapje zit hij, je bul, gefeliciteerd. Dank je. Het was donderdag 21 september, bijna een jaar geleden, in een klein zaaltje naast de bibliotheek. En daar presenteerde jij de resultaten van je voorstudie van je afstudeeropdracht. Het was wat gehaast, het was rommelig. De nadruk was op veel slides, niet zozeer goede slides... En je noemde je resultaten approximately correct. <laughs> Alleen was het niet zo duidelijk wat approximately correct nou betekende. En je verdedigde jezelf onder meer met, uh, ja, I'm a bit chaotic. Kortom, je had wat hulp nodig met de organisatie van je afstudeerwerk. 
Hoe anders zou je verdediging zijn op donderdag 31 mei? Je bent afgestudeerd bij uh, NXP. Uh, Uskoen Paken was daar je begeleider, waarvoor wij hem hartelijk bedanken. En het onderwerp was een Frequency Domain Adaptive Equalizer for Gigabit Automotive Ethernet. Ofwel, hoe kun je elektronisch gezien de ruige en primitieve omgeving van een auto een internetwerk realiseren met een datadoorvoer van 1 gigabit per seconde. Dat lijkt best wel een saai onderwerp, maar niks is minder waar. Om al die miljarden bits uit elkaar te kunnen houden, komt veel interessante natuurkunde, wiskunde en techniek kijken. Na de wat moeizame aanloop kom jij op gang. In de woorden van, woorden van Uskoen Paker, Peter kept going, he did not get scared. Onvolschrokken nam je de wiskunde tot je, je bouwde de nodige matlabmodellen, je programmeerde in Verilog en draaide vele, vele simulaties. Je werkte onafhankelijk en belangrijker, na verloop van tijd stelde je steeds de juiste vragen. En de juiste vragen brachten het onderzoek steeds een stukje verder. Het resultaat is indrukwekkend, zonder meer indrukwekkend. Een compleet ontwerp van een complexe equalizer, geverifieerd en geanalyseerd. Excellent engineeringwerk. Bijna product klaar, volgens Uskoen Paker. Je bent in zes maanden gegroeid van een onzekere student en een zelfverzekerde ingenieur. Inmiddels ben je begonnen bij ProDrive Technologies na een welverdiende vakantie van drie maanden. En ingenieur Hoeven, nogmaals gefeliciteerd met het behalen van je bul. En maak er wat moois van, een mooi feest met familie en vrienden. En veel succes en inspiratie met je loopbaan. Oké, okay, uh, Sai, you have carried out your graduation project at NXP in the high-tech campus under the supervision of Lulu Chen and Dr. Obhijit Dev uh, from NXP and me uh, from Eindhoven, to Eindhoven. So your project uh, had to deal with uh, analysis of uh, automotive Ethernet networks. Uh, modern high-end cars have complex electronic electrical architectures and they need to be reliable in different operating scenarios, robust against faults and errors, as well as cost-effective. Such architectures are composed of multiple communication buses, and Ethernet is one of the most recently considered networks being used in modern cars. And there are various technologies and standards being invented by automotive manufacturers and suppliers to comply with the requirements on reliability, robustness, and cost effectivity. One of such standards is IEEE 8021CV, uh, frame replication and elimination for reliability, frame. The idea is to replicate the frames in a network to enhance the reliability, reliability of the overall network against the faults at various levels. Multiple replicated frames enhances reliability and robustness against faults, as opposed to single frames. The replicated frames need to be then eliminated at the receiving node to avoid duplication. The questions that are relevant are uh, how to analyze dimension and design such a network for a given requirement on reliability, robustness, and, and cost. It is therefore necessary to come up with the right metrics to capture these quantities. In your project, you have proposed metrics to quantify reliability, robustness, and cost of fair Ethernet networks. You have proposed analytical models to analyze this parameter for a given network with different uh, fault behaviors. You have finally proposed a set of design guidelines to design and dimension such networks. And you have uh, validated your claims in simulation as well as in uh, analysis. The project uh, had a high complexity due to, uh, the, given the openness of the research questions, it involved knowledge from univocal network, stochastic modeling, and queuing theory. None of these topics were uh, completely familiar to you at the beginning of the project. You have developed in-depth understanding in these topics very quickly. In fact, you have been, uh, uh, you have developed sufficient expertise on these topics uh, in the course of the project. You have been extremely dedicated and independent throughout the project. You have taken initiative to explore different ideas to deal with difficulty of the analytical models. You have shown remarkable research skills to understand, identify, and extend state-of-the-art techniques uh, along this direction. I would like to congratulate you once more, and I would like to wish you all the best for the future. Thank you.
Goed, Marijn. Ik uh, hoop dat u dit kunt horen. Dat gaat. Gefeliciteerd. Hier heb je de diploma. Je mag je nu uh, ingenieur Rol noemen. En dat is heel vrij. Um, dames en heren, voor mij staat uh, Marijn Rol. En Marijn Rol is een bijzondere student. Uh, heeft een aantal gaves waarvan ik moet zeggen dat ik ze nog niet eerder tegengekomen was. Een van deze gaves is dat hij in staat is om, als ik wat aan het uitleggen ben, mij de indruk te geven dat ik dat in vloeiend oud-Grieks doe. Um, en dat Marijn zelf geen woord oud-Grieks verstaat en begrijpt. Dat, uh, dat uh, dus als de uitleg komt, dan denk ik soms wel eens van, is het nou zo dat dit is aangekomen? En dan word ik zelfs een beetje zenuwachtig. En dan vraag ik mij af, of niet? En dan uiteindelijk blijkt dat allemaal wel heel erg mee te vallen. Um, jij bent... Uh, Eerst zelf met een opdracht gekomen bij een installatiebedrijf om te werken aan uh, uh, Preventive Maintenance. Dat was een bedrijf waar ook jouw broer werkte. En daar hebben we gesproken. De directeur is zelfs bij ons bezoek geweest. We meenden al een uh, heel plan te hebben. En op zeker moment ging dit om uh, onduidelijke redenen opeens niet door. Het bedrijf gaf aan dat ze er toch niet mee door wilden. En we moesten toen een andere opdracht zoeken. Gelukkig uh, werk ik één dag per week bij ASML. En daar is de wereld aan opdrachten. En in het bijzonder geval daar een hele grote opdracht, een hele uitdagende opdracht liggen. Namelijk, als je een nieuw stuk software maakt voor ASML, kunnen wij dan formeel wiskundig bewijzen dat het helemaal correct werkt. Dat je niet dat gedonde krijgt wat je soms op Amsterdam Centraal hebt, waar opeens alle treinen plat liggen. Omdat er toevallig een bericht 32.000 keer te veel van één plek naar een ander gezonden wordt en de hele zaak plat gaat. Dat mag bij de NS mogelijke wijs wel, maar bij een ASML willen we dat liever niet hebben. Dus wij wilden dat helemaal correct bewijzen en dat was tot nu toe nog nooit gedaan. En wat bijzonder interessant was, was dat jij daarmee begonnen bent. In het begin hield ik mij wel eens met hart vast, maar je marcheerde als een soort trein die wel reed door. En tegen het eind kwamen we er helemaal doorheen. We verifieerden het zelfs met alle mogelijke foutafhandelingen, ook dat is indrukwekkend. Er was nog een puntje over uh, het starten en termineren. Uh, dat is even achterwege gelaten, maar op zichzelf was dit buitengewoon indrukwekkend. Een van de dingen die daarbij opviel, was dat jij soms, en ik denk dat je daar iets aan moet doen, niet altijd naar het echte probleem keek, maar soms wat te weinig, wat te veel naar de lokale problematiek keek en niet waar doen wij dit voor. Uh, en dat geeft soms wel eens een uitstraling op andere mensen die zich afvragen van doorzie je het probleem of kijk je alleen maar naar de details. Um, en ik zou, uh, ik denk dat je het herkent, ik zou daar eens even over nadenken. Ik zou bij, nu je ingenieur bent, jezelf zo opstellen dat je vooral ook het grote probleem in zijn verband wil aanpakken en uitstraalt dat je daar ook voor gaat. Um, en een van de laatste dingen die ik wil zeggen is, probeer iets te doen aan die ijselijke blik. De laatste keer dat we elkaar tegenkwamen in de gang, toen knikte ik nog vriendelijk. En toen had ik even het idee, kent hij mij nou of kent hij mij niet? Um, ja, en dan geeft niet zo'n optimaal gevoel. Anyhow, gefeliciteerd met het bereikte, bereikte resultaat. Ja, yeah, first of all, congratulations. Oh, this is. Uh... So, <laughs> congratulations uh, for a great. Uh... For passing the master's degree. So, um, Mark, then you have carried out your master project at Technolution in Gora under the supervision of Mark Van, uh, Mark Van Eyck from Technolution and me at uh, TY Eindhoven. So, your project dealt with uh, standardization of plug and play smart transducers. Uh, transducers are used for sensing and actuating in different industrial systems. Often they are required to be replaced uh, for various reasons. 
and this involves expensive and time-consuming testing and debugging process of the entire system. Therefore, uh, there has been interest in many industries to develop self-configurable uh, plug-and-play systems uh, that autonomously set up the components in compliance with the system's requirement. Objective of your project is to investigate the feasibility of a method for self-configuration of plug-and-play smart transducer based systems suitable for industrial application. First, you have studied the requirement of such systems, and then you have studied design and uh, integration uh, technique and develop a proof of concept uh, prototype for such a system. The project was extremely complex due to its openness. Many things were undefined at the beginning. It, was required, um, it required knowledge of multiple disciplines as, uh, as can be expected. In particular, the mechatronics and embedded programming uh, knowledge was uh, required. But uh, what was required the most is the innovation skill and ability to learn very quickly. And you have done that uh, that job excellently, and um, you have dealt the complexity of the problem very nicely. You have been very proactive and uh, extremely good at planning. You work independently throughout the project, and you are very disciplined in all aspects in terms of planning and uh, managing things. Due to the distance, the project required quite some coordination between uh, Technolution and uh, me, uh, T. Weindhoven, and you have done an excellent job there in coordinating uh, the overall project. My execution. The results of your project are very relevant in the context of European project IMAC, which is a motion control project. And I'd like to congratulate you once again and wish you all the best for the future. Nori, congratulations. Okay, so um, Snori, uh, you have carried out uh, your uh, graduation project at NXP and the high tech campus under the supervision of Dr. Hong Lee uh, from NXP, Chetan Benegal, and Professor Sonia Himsra uh, at TU Eindhoven. The project uh, had to deal with inter vehicle communication in uh, intelligent transport system, ITS. ITS aims at uh, improving safety and efficiency of traffic. In many ITS applications require periodic exchange of status information, like position, speed, headway, distance between vehicles, which implies that the communication channel should be reliable. However, on a road with high uh, traffic density, the channel may become congested, and it can be hard to establish the required awareness among the vehicles. Because of that, it is necessary to implement distributed mechanism that keeps the load of the channel below a specific level. This is exactly distributed congestion control algorithms do by adjusting operational parameters at the transmission, transmitter side as a message rate, transmission power, or data rate. Or among all these parameters, increasing data rate to decrease the level of congestion seems to be the most effective approach in, in the point, from the point of view of application reliability, although there has been, this has been confirmed by theoretical analysis and simulations, experimental studies were missing. The objective of the project, or your project, was to fill this gap to provide more insight in the performance of data rate-based congestion control by performing experimental tests. For this purpose, you created an emulation platform based on commercial onboard units on which uh, you implemented several congestion control algorithms. Numerical experiments in the lab setup as well as outdoors were performed. The experimental studies support theoretical results showing the performance superiority, superiority of uh, data rate based congestion control, in particular, of um, its combination with message rate at high vehicular densities. This was a project with high complexity, requiring deep knowledge in embedded systems, which you had, but also. Uh, of wireless communication, intelligent transport systems, and in-vehicle ad hoc networks, in which you were less familiar. However, it seems not to be a problem. You learned very fast, developed an excellent understanding of uh, vehicular communication. You did an excellent job showing an extremely dedicated, independent, discipline uh, as an uh, extremely dedicated, independent, and disciplined student. You are very good in planning, meeting deadlines. A particular remarkable talent that, uh, that has been noticed is your excellent communication skill. So you know how to approach the right people with the right questions, and you came to, uh, you did, 
handle with a lot of people at NXP with your good communication skills. You have shown a very inventive way for carrying out the time-consuming outdoor test by organizing a team of volunteers that not only involves your supervisor Chetan, but also includes CG, your friend, and your girlfriend. And all resulted in an excellent project execution that produced interesting results, and it is expected that your work will be submitted as a conference paper. And I'd like to congratulate you once more and wish you all the best for the future. Congratulations. Thank you. Ditching, uh, you have carried out your graduation project at TU Eindhoven under my supervision and the supervision of Sajid Mohammad. He is a PhD student at, in our group. Uh, your, your project dealt with vision-based vision lateral control for autonomous vehicles. And camera is being used as a sensor in modern cars since camera provides more information than most of the single sensors can. However, the images from camera need processing, which is generally very compute intensive. Thus, this leads to a long sensing delay. Most of the functionalities, such as lateral control, performs poorly in presence of such a long delay. In your project, you have developed a technique to deal with such a long delay. You have considered image workload variation and take that into account in designing the control algorithm. Your results have shown significant improvement over the state-of-the-art techniques. For the validation purposes, you developed a co-simulation framework with MATLAB and VRIF, which is a, a state-of-the-art physics simulator. Your project involves many skills, including control theory, image processing, and uh, programming. You had little uh, control over most of them in the beginning of the project. You had, uh, with hard work and dedication, you could address all these difficulties in an excellent way. In the course of the project, you made a tremendous improvement in various aspects, including your communication skill. The results of your work is published in uh, uh, Design Systems, uh, Digital Systems Design Conference held in Prague this year. It is actively being followed by other students. I'd like to congratulate you once again and, uh, and wish you all the best for your future. Jiachi, so you have carried out your graduation project at TU Eindhoven under my supervision and supervision of Luke uh, Weyen. Um, your project dealt with control of unmanned air vehicles, UAVs. And today, UAVs and drones are very common in, in many application domains, including uh, lighting and advertisement. The next generation of drones uh, will be used for transportation of heavy goods from one place to another. The major challenge for such application is, is the design of control uh, for the drones in presence of such dynamic loads. With a robust, without a robust control technique, a drone can become unstable and goods can be damaged. In your project, you have worked on developing a robust control scheme for uh, the UAVs. You have shown the proposed technique outperforms the state-of-the-art techniques in terms of disturbance rejection and robustness. You have developed uh, a hardware in the loop simulator emulator as well as a real experimental prototype to validate your approach. Your project involves both theory and practice, control, uh, embedded programming, hardware development, all these skills are re required. Interestingly, you came up with the project description and the project, detailed project planning to me, uh, the beginning of the project. And later on, you followed exactly the same steps um, that you planned. You are the most independent and motivated student I have supervised. The quality and the quantity of your work is much, way much higher than the most of the students I have seen or supervised. On the one hand, you have uh, developed the design technique, which is rich in theory. On the other hand, you have uh, developed a real, uh, real life prototype and uh, HIL simulator. Based on your work, we have um, submitted an article to IEEE Transaction on Industrial Electronics, and the writing was mostly done by you, which was amazing. I'd like to congratulate you uh, once again for this great achievement. I'd like to uh, wish you all the best for your future. Uh, 
after this impressive series. I would like to um, invite uh, Ilona Hunderop, the chairman or chairwoman of um, Gewis, our study association. So, dear ladies, gentlemen, students, family members, friends, and all other attendees, let me start with introducing myself. I am Elona Hoenrop. I am the chairman of the study association Gewis, which is for mathematics and computer science students. Uh, we organize activities that are study related, but also fun activities which are social related. And most of all, it has been a second home to some of the students in front of me. And I am happy to stand here. For the candidates, it's an honor to, see a to receive a master degree in computer science. The degree reflects on years of hard work and is received for only a very small percentage of the population. Not something only you can be proud of, but also your friends and your family. I'm proud of all of you in the name of Gewis. And after this, I would like to pay some special attention to an active member of Gewis. And therefore, I will switch to Dutch for a moment. So, Mitchell, can you come in front? For the leden die al wat langer bij Gewis rondlopen, zullen wel weten wat Mitchell aan Gewis heeft bijgedragen. Hij heeft namelijk veel bijgedragen aan het Supremum wat het magazine is van onze studievereniging. En dit doet hij nog steeds op dit moment. Het Supremum is nu groter dan ooit, met een consistent nieuw design. Echter heeft het Supremum hiervoor een moeilijkere tijd gehad. Maar hier heeft Mitchell alles aan gedaan om te komen waar het Supremum nu is. Uh, aangezien ik jouw oud-commissiegenootje wel ken en hem kan geloven, kan ik wel zeggen dat Mitchell de redder is van het Supremum. Als final editor dit jaar binnen het Supremum heeft hij zichzelf enorm bewezen. En zullen wij hem zeker niet vergeten. Mitchell, namens Gewis wens ik je heel veel succes. En ik nodig je nog uit om lekker bij Gewis te komen kletsen. Alsjeblieft. Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing left what I have to say is to congratulate again all the students in front of me. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Masters of Science, with reference to the words of the previous speakers and on behalf of the departments of Mathematics and Computer Science, Electrical Engineering and Industrial Engine Engineering and Innovation Sciences, I would like to congratulate you and your family with the achieved result, with your degree, and uh, I also wish everybody very good fortune in the future. University likes to stay in contact with its graduates. That's why we ask you to register in AlumniNet and become a member of one of our alumni associations. And more detailed information is in the booklet or the map that you just received. Getting a scientific degree comes with duties as well as rights. As a holder of this degree, you are committed to standards of scientific integrity, trustworthiness, intellectual honesty, openness, and independence. These standards are described in more detail in the Netherlands Code of Conduct for Scientific Practice and in the Eindhoven Code that is derived from it. You also have duties towards society. You must be clear about the boundaries of your own expertise, and you must communicate honestly and independently about the results of your work, including potential risks associated with it. You are committed to the ethical codes for, for research and design involving, involving human subjects or animals. These are serious words, but today is also a time to celebrate. After the meeting, when I have closed it, there will be a reception. Uh, so if you leave the room uh, upwards, there will be a reception area. You will be pointed to that. As a committee here, we want to uh, shake hands with the uh, new masters of science. So I ask you to line up facing the audience. I think it just will just work huh, to do it here after the closing of the meeting. The committee will shake hands and then together we will make uh, a couple of pictures that will be in that area and we will be instructed to do so. And if you also want to take pictures, you are asked, you are welcome to do so, but please wait until the formal pictures are done first. 
So with this, I close this meeting. Thank you very much. I just face the audience and then we walk we walk. Yeah.